Hello, this is Mike Lyman, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 59, and we're going to look at Facebook Flash Builder Application Setup. And so we talked last time about the application we're going to build, and that's basically just the course itself. And we're going to put that into Facebook, and today we're actually going to set it up in Flash Builder. So the outline for today is getting to know Flash Builder, uh, creating an application, assets, and XML invalidation, a very important point. You might build that wonderful XML file, update it, and find out you have an error. Well, you need to validate it to find out what's wrong with it. And we're going to show you how to do that in Adobe Dreamweaver. So let's go right to Flash Builder. So I'm in Flash Builder, and I must say, I just love Flash Builder. I believe that Adobe is going in the right direction. Things are moving forward. This is an open platform, and they're just improving it all the time. I don't feel like I'm underwater like I am in Flash. I really have something to work with and the ability to do some fantastic coding. So let's create a project. So over here is what's called the Navigation Panel. And in the Navigation Panel, all I have to do is right-click in this white space. I'm going to right-click, go to New, go to Flex Project. So the first thing I need to do is give my project a name. I'm going to call it my PHP course. And then I can create a web application or an error application. In this case, it will be a web application. I have the ability actually to upgrade the SDK. So I could actually run with a, a newer SDK that might be out available on the web, might have some feature that I need. And then I have the ability to choose what kind of application type or server I'm going to use. I could choose uh, ASP.NET, ColdFusion, JS, J2EE, or PHP. Now, typically, I might choose PHP since this is a PHP lesson. But in this case, we'll keep this to none, and don't worry. We can come along and change this later on if we need to. So hit Next. Uh, there's the uh, Bin Debug folder we've talked about in previous videos. Go Next. And pretty much everything is okay here. You just go ahead and finish. You don't need to really uh, proceed any further. Uh, Adobe Flash Builder just automatically generates all this stub code for you. And here's your course, and quite a bit has already been generated, a whole framework for you to start programming in. So what we want to do is kind of add some folders now into our SRC folder so we can actually start putting assets into that folder. So I'm going to right click here, go new, and just uh, create this little package or folder down here, and I'll call it assets. And I'm going to start putting assets into this folder. Now I could just come along here and drop an image into this folder, and one way to do that is just to drag directly from the desktop. So if I come over here, let me show you how easily this, easy this is done. I have an image on the desktop, for example. I can just come along here, just grab the image, and drag it right into the Assets folder. Isn't that pretty cool? I mean, that's an amazing fact. You can actually drag things in and out of the Adobe Flash Builder folders, and that just makes uh, life so much easier. Uh, I don't really want to do it like that. I actually want to actually create some folders. So let's create some folders and be a little bit more organized here. So I actually would like to organize myself just a little bit better than this, not just drop an image into the Assets folder. So we're going to right-click on Assets and create a... Uh, Images folder. So just type in images. And also, once again, right click on the assets folder and we'll create a data folder. And we'll call this data. And in the data folder, I'm going to put my XML. And in the images folder, I'll put images. And one of the cool things, once again, is you can drag and drop. So let's just take the city hollow, which is in the wrong folder, and just drag and drop it right into the images folder. And then here, uh, Flash Builder will ask me, hey, do you want to update the references? Now, if it's just an image, it's no big deal. But if it's actually a piece of code, it can actually go in and refactor it for you and actually change the references. So that's pretty cool. Right now, we don't need to change any references. So we'll, just, so we'll uncheck that and hit OK. Hit Continue. And you can see that the image has been transferred to the Images folder. Now, the course that we've already built, and we showed in the previous video, is here. So I'm actually grab the data uh, assets as well. So we'll go to Assets. Go to the data folder. There's my XML. I'm going to copy that and just drop that in the folder below in the new course. Now, that's the one great thing about uh, working with Flash Builder is you can have several projects in one uh, folder and actually copy and paste assets from one to another. And I constantly do that. Once I created a great piece of code, I actually just copy and paste it from place to place. So now I actually have a data with XML in it, and I actually have an image just with one image in it as well. I also need a button image uh, for the buttons. And so I'm going to come back here once again to my old course, and I'm going to grab that asset, that images asset, for the button. So it was AA button JPEG. I'm going to copy that, bring that down to the uh, course I'm building, and I'm going to paste that right in. And now I have the images that I need for this particular course, and I have the data that I need for this particular course. 
Now, the, one of the things that you want to be aware of as you work with Adobe Flash Builder is that it's not good to have too many projects open at once. And so one way to actually close projects is to actually right-click on them and hit Close Project. So I come along here and close this project. And when I close it, it's kind of grayed out, so it's actually not active. If you have like 12 projects open, when you actually run a project in Adobe Flash Builder, it'll actually try to check or co-check all the other projects. So it really slow you down. So you actually want to work with just a few projects open, not a lot. And we'll open this project and close it as we go on. Another thing I could have done is just right-click on this and went close unrelated projects. Now this is the only one open, so this is grayed out. But that will close all projects but the one I'm on. So this is something we're actually going to use as we work with Adobe Flash Builder. So we're doing pretty good. We've actually built a assets folder and we put our XML in the data folder and our images in the image folder. Now if I want to view that XML and see what it looks like, I can click on it or I can right click on it. And when I right click on it, I have a number of options for opening it. I could open it with the system editor or the text editor. Now the system editor would most likely be Dreamweaver, but the text editor will open it up inside of uh, Flash Builder and I'll do that. And uh, once you have XML and you start entering into it, you're going to make mistakes. So you always want to validate. So one of the things that will happen is you, when you run your program, it won't work. And you go, what happened to my file? So let's learn how to validate an XML file. So what I'd like to do now is actually open up this data master uh, in uh, Dreamweaver. So what I'm going to do is open it up with the system editor. And it should go to Dreamweaver, but it didn't. It went to another program. Microsoft Works Spreadsheet. I don't really want to use that. So how do I get to Dreamweaver? I would right click on Data Master. I'm going to go to Open With and choose Other. In that particular case I can actually navigate to Dreamweaver and open it up with that. And so I can actually edit it. Now I'll go to Browse and let's browse to Dreamweaver. And there it is right there. Hit OK. And it opens up my XML in Dreamweaver. Now we haven't talked a whole lot about building this XML. We will in the next lesson. But what I want to do is show you a very important aspect of Dreamweaver, and that's the ability to validate with it. And so I have this XML, but I don't know if it's good or not. So what I want to go to is File, Validate as XML. And when I do that, if it's OK, there will be nothing in this particular box. But if it's not, it'll help me find my error. So let's keep introduce an error here. Here's a little error right there. We'll go ahead and save that. And now let's go to validate, validate, and go to as XML. And when you do that, if you come down here, you can actually see there's actually been an error introduced. And it says, hey, the error is at line 10. Let's go to line 10 and see if that's where the error is. So here at line 10, we see that is not the error. The error is actually above. So many times when you're validating XML, just keep in mind that when you have an error, that error can be actually where it's pointing to or typically above, and you want to go up and see if the problem's there. So if you have an XML that's hundreds of lines, you know, it can be somewhat complex, but without a validator, forget it. So we're going to remove this error. We're actually going to save this again, file save. We'll go ahead and validate it again, see if everything's OK. Let's validate again as XML. And you'll see as you move this up that there are now no errors down here, so we're actually in good shape. So we're ready to run this XML. And this is one of the tools that you need in your toolbox when you're working with a back-end XML system. So that's how you bring up uh, your XML from uh, Adobe Flash in Dreamweaver, which makes it very seamless in the process. And we're ready to move on to the next lesson. So what did we cover? In this particular lesson, we showed you how to create an Adobe Flex project. We showed you how to add an assets folder and to put data in and uh, to throw your images in by dragging and dropping from the desktop. We actually showed you the XML file, how to read it, and how to validate it. And the next lesson, we're going to continue with building this Facebook application. Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. I'll see you next time.